Hey guys, Matt from Crank Engineering. Just bought this second hand diner and we've got to make some bits to fix that rear brake. Check it out. Right, big problem I've found so far is there's a bush or something missing out of here where this caliper slide goes and this caliper has been rattling around and you can see hopefully in the camera you can see it's worn quite a bit into the caliper and there's quite a bit of movement at the bottom one too so there's a dust shield here but I don't know whether there's a bush or anything in there so you can see there's quite a bit of movement in the bottom one and obviously the top one now that's no good so I checked the parts book and of course fucking Harley doesn't sell the bushes separately you've got to buy this whole um, caliper assembly to get them or the bracket I can't remember which one it was but this is crank engineering we don't buy fucking shit we can make so we're gonna have to fix this so I can a make it functional and b I've got to pass a test so I can transfer the bike into my name so what are we gonna do is I called up my local engineering plastics company and I said look I need to make a bush uh, for a caliper and I need the bush I need the caliper to be able to slide on that bush so I need to be a plastic that's got some sort of lubricating properties and I need a little bit and I'm gonna lay it so I'm gonna make these bits myself so I just need a bit of bar stock so they found an off cut of this stuff I don't even know what it is some sort of plastic but I told them what I wanted it for and they found a bit off cut that I can use so I'm going to machine a couple of bushes to fit in these locations on the caliper and take out all of this motion in here and hopefully fix it once and for all I'll just backtracking a little bit of course the other way to fix this is to buy all these parts new and this caliper is a little bit damaged so I'm going to try and salvage it with a bush in there uh, but failing that, I might have to see if I can find a second-hand caliper off a wrecked bike uh, because I'd hate to know what the price of one of these new is. But, like I said, we're going to try with a bush first and take up all that space and hopefully it'll be sorted without having to spend mega bucks. Since we know what the problem is here, I think the next step will be just to take this caliper off. There's a couple of reasons it'll make that easier. If I know it'll open the system and we'll have to bleed the brakes, but the brake switch rear brake switch on this bike is dead and it's located in down behind there so it has to come out anyway and it acts as a banjo bolt uh, for the brake system so the brake system is going to be opened anyway to replace this switch so i may as well just disconnect the line and take the whole caliper off and that'll make things a whole lot easier so let's get into it now these caliper slides are torx uh, bolts torx fittings or torx head and often they're really tight uh, because Harley lock tights them in. This bike hasn't had that done because I think this has been off before. Uh, but when you find them really tight, don't use an impact tool because breakage. So just put them on a bar if you have to go. These ones, again, have already been loosened sometime early and I checked them before, so they're not stupid tight. All right, I've given this caliper a bit of a clean up. I've just jammed some masonite strips in here just to keep the pistons in the caliper and this is a little bit worse than I expected so you can see pretty clearly this is ovaled out and it's quite thin just here where the pin has been sitting in that area there now to put a look at the back the back's nowhere near as bad so what this means is this bore is now tapered so really machining a cylindrical bush isn't necessarily going to work because this is basically flogged out in a irregular shape so i think we might try and make a bush out of plastic and i'll have to find a second hand caliper in the long term to replace this one because this really isn't serviceable and we've thinned out the material quite a bit here so this bottom uh bottom one here seemed to be okay According to the parts book, this is all that's supposed to be in there is this, there's a steel sleeve inside this uh, rubber 
bushing or rubber seal. I don't know, not know what it's really there for. Probably just for a bit of vibration damping. But that one seems to be okay. So I'm not really going to do anything with this bottom bore. But this top one, we'll have to do something. So we'll just get some get that plastic piece out and start machining up something that'll fit. Well, this is the drawing of the part that I'm planning to make and again I don't think we're going to be successful because this damaged bore is not really concentric or anything like that so I'm just going to hope for the best here. What I'm aiming to do is make this a little bit large and then hopefully it'll tap in as an interference fit. It'll at least, at least be functional until I can source a second hand caliper that's not damaged like this one. So. I hope you can follow what we're trying to do here. We're putting a 1.5 degree taper on this uh, bush because the bore in the caliper is damaged and it measures approximately 17 and a half on the back side and around about 18 and a half on the front side here. So again, it's not highly accurate because of the damage to the bore and there's not really much I can do about it. So. I just want this functional so I can ride the bike and then I'll worry about getting another caliper. So we're just going to put a little shoulder, so it looks like a, looks like a bit of a top hat really, just so that the, the bush uh, fits flush against his face and doesn't go any further. So this is an arbitrary dimension here, I just picked 22 because it looked about right. Uh, 19 is the depth of the bore across here. Um, 14 and a half is the diameter of the pin, which is this guy here. So I'm also expecting that when we tap this bush into the bore, that bore is going to crush a little bit. So I might drill it a little bit undersized and then see if we can ream it out to the final size once we've tapped it in. So we'll just have to wing it a little bit and see what we can do. So let's pop a bit of this bar off. So I'm just going to cut it with a handsaw. I just need enough to sit in the chuck with about you know 19 plus whatever thickness I make this. Uh, a little uh, top hat, maybe a two millimeters. So we'll need 21, 22, 24, 25 sticking out maybe, and then sort of 50 in the chuck. So we'll cut a piece off about 70 millimeters long. I'll just use a handsaw because it's just plastic and we'll put it in the lathe chuck and get on with it.
Okay, so I don't think this has been a very big success. I'm not sure whether it's visible on the camera. I think it might be, but the bush has basically taken on the shape of the uh, elongated, just damaged hole. So it's just squashed in and it's now, the bush is now elongated as well. So it's better than what it was, clearly, but it's still not perfect. So I'm going to take a 916th reamer, which is the size of this pin, and run it through here and try and get a somewhat circular hole. And I'll do that off camera and we'll see if this is any better, better fit once I've done that. Right, so I think I'm fucked. So I couldn't ream this out circular because the bush is so thin that it doesn't really hold in the ball. And as soon as you start trying to turn something inside there, it just grabs the bush and pulls it out. And I've made a mess of the bore as you can see. So the only other way that I could think of to salvage this part would be to somehow set this up in the mill and re-bore this out oversized and make sure it's a proper cylindrical bore. At the moment it's a tapered bore because this side of the bore is really badly damaged. So you'd have to bore it out straight to make a proper cylinder and then sleeve it with something. So the only problem with that is there's really no meat on this side of the brake caliper left to bore it out and it would make the whole thing very thin around the bore which is not really a great outcome. So like I said, I think I'm fucked. I think I'm going to have to find a second hand one or see what the price of a new one is. So these are about 180 bucks new in the US and we'll see what sort of tax we have to pay to have one here. So I'll be checking that out tomorrow. So I ended up getting a new caliper from the dealer because I found a second hand one and when I added chipping to get it here, it was only 30 bucks more. I could get a brand new one. And I got new pads with it as well. Also picked up a new pin because this one's a little bit worn. You can see the marks right in the center here where it's been rubbing on the caliper. I can't really feel that. Oh, a little bit here with a fingernail. So it's only a little bit worn, but I still probably can put a new one in. So we've got these. Uh, now, on the new caliper, obviously here's our old one with our badly damaged bore. The bit that's missing is this little bush here and it's just a little plastic thing, which is a bit surprising, I thought. So it's just a really thin molded plastic bush and obviously it hooks around the back of the bore with the little tangs on the back here. But you can see hopefully in the camera if I line it up properly, the difference here so obviously we would want quite a bit of material out of here on the old caliper and there goes my pistons rolling away so i wasn't far off when i made this nylon plastic bush thingy i just couldn't manufacture it as accurately as these guys as the dealer as, as harley had manufactured the original one so anyway we've got proper meat here on the ball so this guy goes in here pin goes in here that takes up the space between the pin and the ball and away we go. Now I think the only big problem I'm going to have is bleeding this thing because this has got an ABS on this bike and the brake pedal goes to the ABS module before it goes to the caliper and the module's higher up so if I've got any air up the top here in the in the ABS module I'm not going to be able to get it out so it does say in the book that you've got to go to the dealer to get them to do a bleed and I've done a fair bit of research on the internet and it looks like no one's figured out a way of doing it without using the diagnostic computer to open up the ABS module so you can bleed it out. So it could be screwed there as well, but let's just get it back together and see how we go. Right, problem sorted. And this was a little bit easier than I thought. So I just want to show you the brake line arrangement. So this is coming off the banjo bolt on the back of the master cylinder. It goes up the back and into the ABS module. And then this one runs out of here, around the back here and into the caliper so I tried bleeding it normally which is just to crack the bleeder valve pump the brake pedal and close the bleeder valve and that was a miserable failure so I thought oh, well, I guess I'm going to the dealer but I came across a dude posted online and said if you use a vacuum bleeder and suck the fluid through then you don't necessarily have to go and do that so I happen to have one of these 
vacuum bleeders with the attachment for a dual front caliper as well which I didn't need in this case but you just hook up shop air to this fitting and hook up your tube to the uh, bleeder on the caliper and literally suck the brake fluid through the whole system and this worked a beauty so I've just been for a test ride and the rear brake pedals rock hard and does a good job of pulling the bike up so uh, no need to go see the dealer we've been able to vac or suck the fluid from the reservoir through the master cylinder through the ABS unit and all the way out the caliper so that was a bit of a success and repairs finished new calipers in and we're done thanks for watching